Day Dawn's Arcs! Welcome everyone to your weekly Fantasy Star Online 2 podcast, recorded live on May 23rd, 2020. I am one of your hosts, Prince Brightstar, and with me is Zance. Go ahead and say hello. Konnichiwa! So, I'm we gotta find f- any ways to say hello in different languages each time that, from now on, because it's fun. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, so, we got a pretty busy show here today. Quite a number of topics we need to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, PC! Finally! Yes, finally! Ah! And though we are primarily a Fantasy Star Online 2 focused uh, podcast from time to time, we do talk about other things that are happening elsewhere in the series. Uh, We'll be talking about those later in the show. Uh, But before we uh, start all that, we need to talk about our gaming weeks here. Uh, For myself, I've actually been uh, pretty busy in PSO2 in the lead-up up up to the uh, PC launch. Um, My goal, basically over the past two weeks, has essentially been to get myself up to 400 titles. And I am five titles away at this point. 395. So, yeah. Real close, but the problem is I have run out of, like, really easy ones to get. It's sort of like I can either spend, like, three to five hours running the extreme quests over and over to get a single title. Uh, I could run NPC characters over and over to get a hundred runs with NPCs to get me a title for each of those. That's what I'm going to be focusing on, to um, just because I can at least go for three titles at the same time, but that still also requires hours and hours to do. Um, I could also go into the casino and get like 50 and 100 wins on certain of the certain casino games, but that's that's still going to require a multi-hour commitment at this point. So I I'm literally out of the easy ones to do at this point. I I don't know what else to do, and I mean I could go for like uh, getting myself kidnapped as part of the time attack quest. But at the same time, those are random. There's no guarantee yep. I would I would luck into one of those after several hours. And so. with the time attack ones, with the um, with getting kidnapped, I believe you could just go into the time attack, start it, and if you don't get it, you restart over and over again until you actually get kidnapped. Yep. The problem is that you need to get your account flagged for it first, and there's no indication that that's happened. Yep. So. I, 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 the only thing I, to, time attacks over and over again with NPCs. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that's that's really the only the only other thing that I could do. But uh, what I'm doing actually to get my uh, NPC uh, titles is I'm going into the quest uh, suppress uh, Udan because that one is like two to three minutes to complete each time. Uh, there's only a single area for that, so it's it's a really really quick get in, get out, and restart the quest. So, um, aside from that, all my characters are now, uh, or all my classes are now, uh, level 75, so I've, uh, taken care of that. Again, multi-hour commitment, if I wanted to get, uh, all the class X cubes, I would need to get up to, uh, to, uh, the, the fourth, uh, um, client order that gives you the four extra skill points on those. Mm-hmm. So, that's, that's, that's sort of off the table right now, uh, before PC launches. Um, but yeah, uh, the other thing is I also finally finished leveling up all of my alts to level 50, so that's going to be quite a bit of Masetta each week as long as I keep on top of it. Yep. And I need to keep on top of my other characters as well. I think with PC coming out, it's going to be a lot easier to do that, because I, like I've mentioned before on other episodes, I hate playing on the Xbox especially with controller it's just ah, annoying yeah i i agree it's it's like i had to choose between do i want to dodge or do i want to be able to target an enemy Mm -hmm. and for me it's okay do i want to get myself and not and have the step action on the hop bar instead of my pas or just forego using step action and just have pas at least yeah. with Bouncer, I don't need to worry about that since there's only four PAs, so I can have one of those uh, slots as the step action. It's just with other classes and other weapons, it's really annoying. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I, I can't wait for PC either, and it, it's it's 
It's it's coming up this week, basically. Yep. Uh, Wednesday. Yep. But we'll talk about that after I talk about what I've been doing. Yep. Go ahead. Dragon Quest. That's it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, yeah, I've primarily just been playing Dragon Quest X. Um, hey, like I said before, if PSO2 can finally get a localization, then so can Dragon Quest X. But other than that, I finally built a new PC. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, I, I was waiting for the motherboard for the longest time, but it finally came in on Tuesday. And I built it. I actually live streamed myself building it. And most of the time I was just trying to figure out what the hell I was even doing for the most part. Yeah, and I was like, uh, when you sent me that picture, I was like, why do you have the graphics card in the middle slot there? It's not the middle slot, it's the bottom slot. Bottom slot, like okay. There, there's two different slots for a graphics card, but I, I picked the bottom one there. I didn't know if there was any differences with that it really comes down to the mother ma uh, motherboard manufacturer if there is one but typically uh like i mentioned before the top slot will have the 16x uh, link while the lower one will only have like an 8x slot ah well i haven't seen any performance issues so far with any games that i've thrown at it so it seems to be working well, definitely, uh, once again, congratulations on uh, getting that thing together. Hopefully that thing mm -hmm. served you well for the next several years, if not longer. Oh, it better. Uh, my gaming laptop served me well for two years, so this should last me for much longer. Especially since, hey, if I want to make an upgrade, I can just open it up, pull out the part, put another part back in, or put another part in, and there we go. Easy. Yep, and based on what some of the early numbers are saying about the, uh, the NVIDIA... RTX 3000 series, it's looking like that's going to be a huge thing. Mm-hmm. I'll eventually look into getting a better graphics card afterwards, but this 1070 is going to serve me extremely well for a long time. Yep. All yeah. Right. Like I said, other than that, it's just been Dragon Quest X, so... Yeah. If, if there ever is a translation project for that, I'll definitely at least check it out at that point. Mm -hmm. I would still recommend checking it out now even if the language barrier is hard to get through but there are guides you can look on and i am actually part of a um, english team dragon's den so gotcha. it's been very helpful all right but anyway let's talk about pc finally launching yes oh my god so we don't have any specific details in terms of any sort of a preload sega hasn't said anything about that yet um, typically, when the, when a new version of the game launches, usually there's an extended maintenance that happens. So that may last for up to 24 hours, based on historical um, uh, what's happened in, uh, on the Japanese servers in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. If anything, we might see that one start at 4 p.m. the old time uh, when uh, when this happens on Wednesday. Um, that's that's at least what I'm expecting to have happen. Uh, and then while they, uh, once the servers are down, that's probably then when you'll actually be able to uh, load the game. Mm. And well, of course, I'm hoping that, like, it, yeah, it will be maintenance on Tuesday, and then Wednesday, once the game is back up, that's when the PC version's out to install and play. Yep. And of course, uh, that that is only on the Microsoft Store. There is no Steam version, unfortunately. But hopefully, we'll get that in a year or two with uh, whatever uh, exclusivity uh, deal Microsoft has done to uh, basically now, get this on their where, platform. Where does it say that it's just on the Microsoft Store? Because nowhere on the actual site does it say that. Uh, it was uh, basically in the manual. They took away the Steam stuff. Mm. Oh, is it currently in the manual, actually? No, it doesn't look like it. It, it looks like it's just Xbox is up on there. Yeah, they took away... They There used to be a section in the manual for Steam, but then they took it away. Yeah, but that was during the um, pre-build of it. Yeah, that, that's basically what I'm referring to. When, when the manual first came out, it was referenced mm -hmm. to Steam, and then once the game actually had its open beta launch, then they took that away. Yeah. 
So currently, so we're just assuming that it's going to be on the Microsoft Store. We don't know exactly. Uh, there was, I believe, one news sort, news site that said it was going to be Microsoft Store. Um, let me see. The, I think that was Forbes. I remember Ida posted it. Um, oh yeah, it was Forbes. Yeah, and uh, once again, they they. I don't know if they're breaking street date on these or what's happening, but they, those articles are coming out before Sega even announces that the uh, when when the game versions are coming out. So this is the second time that they do that, that they've done that. So I'm hoping that um, you know Sega has learned their lesson and they don't push those articles to them anymore because that's 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 not good that they're breaking street date like that. Yeah, because yeah, Forbes. Uh, posted saying that it was going to be exclusive to the Microsoft Store, but currently, like I said, there is no um, confirmation on the official site, so it might be true, it might not, we don't know. They might surprise us saying, oh yeah, it's on Microsoft Store and Steam, like how um, Halo is on both the Microsoft Store and Steam. Yep. Yeah, and it, it, in, if it hadn't been for, for the Twitter... Uh, talking about it, uh, I would have been like, okay, is this uh, possibly something that uh, that they had done um, as sort of their uh, their pre uh, pre COVID plans, and then they forgot to take it away. Mm -hmm. But no, the the launch is uh, is coming. It's it's just a matter of time, basically, at yep. this point here. Wednesday, my dudes. Yep. Ah. <laughs> I can't wait. I, as, soon, as soon as that comes out, I'm going to be downloading it, just loading it up, and hopefully I'll be able to actually dig into the into the files and see if maybe I can pull out the raw versions of Kuna singing. It's... Hey, um, Ida's also hoping to just dig into those files as well. See if uh, the tweaker is compatible with it as well. Yeah. Or try it... to make it compatible with the tweaker. Yep. Because, yeah, there are some people who don't fully like the localization and prefer the fan translation. So that would actually be pretty interesting of having it to where the fan translation could be used in the NA server. Definitely. Uh, that, that, yeah, and plus there was uh, uh, Ida recent, uh, very recently confirmed that uh, on their Discord that uh, the original version that was in the closed beta actually had some of the fan translation in there amazingly oh that, really yeah that creates a lot of legal issues huh. the, the fact that they, that basically that's plagiarism there that is interesting so yeah it's um by the time they got the open beta out though that that was uh, that was taken care of but still wow okay but that but that goes to show a tra uh, fan made translation files. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's, it, it may have only been one of the translators that had done it and not the whole crew. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's still not good that 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 happened under Sega's watch. Nope. Also, yeah. I'm surprised that they actually acknowledged the fan translation. The, the fan I translation some way that... it, it, the way that Ida put it there's there's no bad blood um, on what happened uh, mm -hmm. and if anything uh, the uh, producer um, of the of the game uh, said that they were impressed that uh, that the uh, that the that they that the fan translation was done on the uh, benchmark before the game ever even came out in Japan Wow. That that was like way way back. I was I was there in the in the chat before uh, before uh, Ida created the Discord. It was an old IRC network uh, that we all used to be on. But um, but yeah, eventually that turned into the Discord once the once the tweaker really started to pick up momentum there. Nice. Yep, and, and it's it, I re I still remember when the tweaker wasn't perfect. I, I tried getting into the game, but the tweaker wasn't perfect. Like, um, I had trouble with getting items translated. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, it was, it used to be, it was, it wasn't as easy as it used to be here. It used to be, uh, 
what, it was three files you had to download, the normal file, the large files, and the story file. The story yeah. file came down as a BitTorrent, and then you had to also do what was called the... What was that called? I, I It was something that uh, that Ida had adapted from... Um, from uh, from uh, one of the Gundam series, and if we if we ever have them on the show here, we gotta bring that up with them. What what their fascination with Gundam is? Uh, the GN <laughs> Shield. Um, they, basically, it was a um, it was a, a side loaded program that killed the Tweaker program while the game was running, and then brought the Tweaker back up once the game ended. And it had it was like. What was what was crazy about the whole thing was that when it was referenced in Game Guard, it was called the uh, the twerker of all things. Oh, the twerker! Oh my god! <laughs> I know. It, it is amazing the the things that this project has had to go through in order to actually get to where it is today. Plus, there was like a year where there were no. Okay, maybe not a whole year, but it was a long time between story translation patches, and it was because Ida was working in the background trying to restructure how they were doing everything so that they wouldn't have to go through this whole rigmarole every single time there was a new story patch. Hmm. And now it, the tweaker is at the point where everything is just automatically updated. Pretty much, yeah. It's uh, very rare that they're ever... Uh, any issues, uh, at least from my experience with it. Mm -hmm. It's just downloading straight from the server or from the Sega servers. It takes a long time because of distance. Yep. I, I know that from experience with Dragon Quest X. Oh boy. Uh, uh, updating from a fresh install takes around like four to five hours. Yeah, it's... And... It was like that. It's about the same for uh, PSO2. Once again, depending upon your internet speed, of course. But yeah, it, it's the game is like uh, approaching. What, what is it at now? Let me let me see real quick here. I've got the thing loaded. Uh, let's see here. Current folder size is. It's counting up. Let's see. Pretty big. Uh, if I'm yeah. Correctly. 75 and a half gigs at over 86,000 files. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I didn't expect it to be that big. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's definitely a lot, but, mm -hmm. what can I say? It's, it's the, it's the game, and, it, and that doesn't even include the, uh, the English voices, so I can only imagine what the patch, slot, or what the, what the download on, uh, Wednesday is going to be. Mm -hmm. Cause it's gonna, it, cause it includes both English and Japanese voices. Yep. Much like how the Xbox version includes them both. Yep. And we're gonna see if any if, if any of the uh, English voices are in for episode four yet. Mm-hmm. Also, now that we're having the PC version out, can we finally please have battle or battle mode and challenge mode, please? Challenge mode I would agree with. Battle mode that didn't come out until episode five, I thought. Or just at least have challenge mode. I would like that. Yep. I agree. The challenge mode was an episode three thing. Um, I think it was towards the end, and we're starting to get to that point because all that we've got left for episode three is Magatsu and Profound Darkness, uh, Tower Defense number four, and the limited quest, sort of the end of episode three limited quest, where you had, uh, where you were on uh, in uh, Daybreak Province, and Kuna's uh, uh, Kuna's moods, uh, music is playing. And whenever a, a uh, fall virus shows up, Kuna herself is going to s show up and start singing. Oh. Uh, unless they decide to skip that limited quest. Honestly, I'm surprised we haven't gotten Arc Ship Fire Swirl yet as well. But uh, they may have been holding off on that one for the. Uh, second. I, I'm still surprised to skip Mind Defense too. I, mean, I I think that was a good one to skip. To be honest, it really didn't yeah. add much to to the story of what was going on. All it really did is just uh, just split things into two different paths, and honestly, players are already so overpowered at this point uh, because everything's based off of the Episode Six engine that the uh, that it's unlikely that any of the uh, Fall Spawn would get past that, uh, that opening gate 
Um, so. Well, yeah, and you say people are already overpowered, yet my first time doing Minecraft 3, I failed. Yeah, I saw that. I was watching your stream at that time. That was not good. And, and I think what it was was nobody was collecting crystals. Yeah. Usually what I do whenever I'm in Tower Defense 3, regardless of if I can tell if I'm overpowered compared to the rest of the group or not, I'll spend the first three rounds just running in the backfield collecting crystals so that we actually do have enough to push ourselves up the over to the, uh, the 10,000 marker at the end to get that third AS out. Yeah, that's pretty smart. I think I need to do that as well. Or at least ensure that you can get a second one out as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting two AISs out is pretty important. Yep. Dark ship fire squirrel. That's 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 a, that's a, an urgent quest. I've been looking forward to seeing again because we never got an ultra hard version of that. And anybody that doesn't know what arc ship fire swirl is, it's basically a sequel quest to the original. Uh, uh, what was it called? Um, uh, it, it was sometimes referred to as the uh, as the um, as the uh, as the pioneer one uh, uh, fire quest. Um, okay. it's basically this quest where you go around and you put out fires, um, using, uh, machine guns, and while that's, uh, while you're doing that, uh, the song, um, uh, Angels with Burning Hearts is playing from Burning Rangers. Of course. Of course. You're fighting fires. And of course it would play, um, Burning Rangers music. Yep. Although in PSO2, you actually get mech guns that are actually water guns. Ooh. I got some old footage of that on my channel on YouTube. Uh, hmm. Yeah. In, even during, uh, during uh, what was it, uh, episode five, I want to say, uh, there was a scene that was just perfect for that. So I just, I just cut right into that music uh, during my series. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Whenever I tell people about the uh, what game I would consider the best on the Sega Saturn, I do say Burning Rangers. Yeah, it's, it's a short game, but a good one. It's a very good game. Yeah, Just, Saturn... I, I would love to play it again, but getting the Sega Saturn's cheap. Getting that game isn't. Sega Saturn has such a, such a, such a troubled history in the West here, uh, especially with how they just launched it at E3 that, that day way, way yeah. back, and then Sony comes in and just says $2.99. $2.99. That's all they had to say. Yep. Oh, poor Sega Saturn. Could have been so good. Yep. And we didn't even get the 4 megabit uh, memory cartridge in the West, so we didn't get access to all the great 2D fighters like uh, uh, X-Men vs. Capcom. We didn't get a lot of the RPGs, like the uh, like the remakes of the Lunar series. We didn't get um, uh, one of my we favorites. Pan we at least uh, got Panther Dragoon Order. Yep. One of my favorites, uh, Dragon Force. We never got the sequel of that over here yeah. in the West. Hey, Chain. Hey, Chain. Uh. But yeah, that's that's yeah. Looking forward to the uh, to the PC launch. It's it's coming up this week, yeah. and yeah. Well, since and since we're also talking about Burning Rangers, hey Sega, can we get some Burning Rangers outfit in the? In one of the AC scratch for NA, please. Thank you. <laughs> that actually would be a good suggestion. Can we get that as a scratch for the West? Hmm, Burning Rangers would be pretty good. <laughs> yep. All right. Or, so I or think Knights. Knights also works. Yep, Knights too. Oh, and speaking of uh, speaking of uh, exclusive content, and we're gonna see this a little bit later. The Sonic costume is no longer exclusive to the West. Oh. Yep. Is, is it finally coming to Japan? It is. Oh, nice. I, I'm guessing it's as an AC scratch. Uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what okay. it is. All nice. right. <laughs> yep. So let's go ahead and move into now the North American site updates here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, see. PC hype. Woo. Yep. Uh, so first, we got the uh, concert schedule for Living Ooh. Universe. Uh, Living Universe uh, was uh, uh, was the name of the song uh, that was in the intro to Fantasy Star Portable 2. 
Yeah, uh, if any of you happen to remember that. I still play that game. Yep. And it, it's funny, if you if you think back to um, uh, back to then, you had all this flowery imagery right at the start, and now you think about uh, Omega and Ephemera, mm. it might have actually been a reference there back then. Mm. Yeah, th so even, even way back then, Sega has been planning to do stuff for a really long time here. Um, and it's even further evident when, when you consider the PSO2 Alpha um, stuff in Japan was packaged with Fantasy Star Portable 2 Infinity. Technically, yes. Um, mods, G-Shaders, and Parson is against the TOS, but it's not that much enforced. Unless it's uh, considered cheating, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's, it's not really enforced, and really, it's more a case of, as long as you don't rub somebody's face and how badly they're performing or something like that, you're, you're typically going to be okay. Just just kind of keep it to yourself that, 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 that you're doing it, essentially. Or to your friends. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Miku and Luca. Uh, yes, so, uh, get ready to see what has in world fans of these renowned virtual singers for so long li live and on your ship. Hatsune Miku and uh, Megari Luka will be serenading the shopping plaza in the coming day, so make sure you are prepared to dance. For more information on live events, see the bottom of the page. Uh, concerts always seem to have a lasting effect on operatives. Many arcs report getting lucky in rare drops and Messina amounts, as well as finding amazing things after a stoop uh, 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 finding themselves more astute after witnessing one of these live events, uh, making them unmissable for more reasons than just the amazing songs. And so, what they're referring to there is after witnessing one of these concerts, uh, you do get a 25% uh, boost, uh, which is a try boost. Okay. And uh, this is uh, basically the schedule here. So, they've got uh, several concerts today, looks like. Uh, there's actually gonna be... Actually, it looks like one just ended here, uh, uh, a couple of minutes ago here. Um, or no, actually, no, I'm looking at that wrong. That's, that's in an hour, I'm sorry. Um, and then there's one at 2.30, one at 5.30, and then one at 7.30, and then there are going to be two more of these tomorrow. So, yeah, we got Hatsumi Miku. Uh, in the game. Uh, now, I will say, knowing this from personal experience, this was exactly the same version uh, that they had in Japan when this concert was released over there, so this content is a few years old uh, in that respect, and it was an English over um, in that sense, uh, it, over there, since it was um, in English in the original version uh, on, the, on the PlayStation Portable. Yep, and hearing Miku singing English is just weird. Yeah, Vocaloid voices are good for Japanese. Not so much for uh, for American voices, unfortunately. There's there's just a little too much uh, nuance uh, to, to be uh, that needs to be picked up for it to really work correctly. Yeah, especially with Japanese when it comes to the mnemonics. They're very rigid. Yeah. The way you read it is the way you say it. That's not the case in in English. Yep. Um, read, spelled the same way as red, and then there's red. There, there, there. <laughs> two, two, two. Ah. Uh, the song from PSU is way better. We will choose to fight. Yeah, that song. Yep. Although that was the remake, the the original one. Yeah, that one. was the um, AOTI version, I know. Yep. But I love that one so much better because it's so much cheesier. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and then there was the remix on the original uh, Fantasy Star Portable, which was interesting compared to the original from just Fantasy Star Universe. Mm-hmm. Great, now I want to play more Universe. When is Clementine coming back up? Ah! They haven't announced anything about that, but we'll I we'll know. pick that up when when the time comes. Yeah. 
Anyway, let's move on to the next one here. We've got a new AC Scratch. Uh, so, Miku. Yep, so let's go More ahead and take, let's take a look at the uh, video here. So we have a Hatsune Miku replica. It's already really expensive. I think it's around 9 mil already. Ay, ay, ay. And the hair is 10. And there's the Luca uh, costume. I was kind of surprised to see these two in here, Kagami and Rin, uh, and the Rin other and one Len. that we're gonna. See. Yeah, Len. Because uh, they don't even uh, they don't even do a concert, I don't think. No, they don't. But they're very important in terms of Miku's friends. Yep. But no, uh, Kaito. I've noticed that because out of all the other ones, you got Luca, Rin, and Len, but. There's no Kaito? Oh, I'm afraid, I'm not, Kaito? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not familiar enough with uh, with them to really know that. Uh, we've also got some emotes here. Plus, we had a uh, Hatsune Miku uh, mag just a moment ago. Rapper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not even going to attempt to rap here. So yeah, that's what we've got for uh, the video here. Let's scroll and down Dance and see. Dance 9 is pretty, not that great. I, I was actually able to get Dance 9 for like around a mil, which is extremely cheap for a dance. Hmm. Let's see here. So we've got, uh, once again, all the uh, costumes that were introduced. Uh, also got some... Uh, uh, interesting uh, other costumes here, the Hardened Emotions, which it looks like that gives you uh, um, some tweeters as well as uh, bass speakers on your uh, on your uh, on, uh, on your uh, shirt there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Yep. And then I've been seeing the these. Foot. Oh yeah. Yeah, those have been going around in the shops a lot lately. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. Got your cargo pants. And then... Honestly, I like the more casual look for characters. I've been hoping to make, like, a more casual look to my main character, since Bouncer just looks cooler with just more casual stuff. Yep. And let's see. We've got... Uh, of course, new uh, cast parts here, the Rock Lock, uh, or ro uh, Rolock body, rather. And Kreslo. Yep. Interesting feat for a cast there, that's for certain. Also, remember how I kept on saying we're getting close to the Miku hair? There's the Miku hair. Yep, all three of them. Yep. I'm not even sure what the difference is between number two and number three here. I mean, at least number one, it's longer, so... I think, uh... Yeah, that is, like, right down to your feet. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, here's your, uh... Here's basically your, uh... Your Dragon Ball Z, uh, Saiyan haircut if you want that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it has a headpiece? Oh, does it? Uh, look at the two and three again. Huh? You know what? I, there's I, a, I, I see it, yeah. Yeah, there's a difference in the ears there. Yeah, there's the little hair piece at the pigtail base. Okay. All right. Very uh, insignificant, but okay. Yep. And of course, you can't have corpse hood clothes without a corpse hood. Yeah, that's also really expensive. I'm still waiting for a bald or skinhead haircut. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see here. You've got an effector Oh, bloodshot eyes, which is what every single PSO2 player looks like. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much right. Uh, and then you've got a Tetra shield here. It looks like an Epsaros from uh, back in the day with PSO. Uh, if you happen to remember that mag. Yeah, I remember that mag. Uh, and then, of course, if you want a cat on your shoulder, there you go. 
I wonder how many players are going to put four cats on their shoulders. Probably a lot. Probably. Uh, and then, of course, Ooh, uh... Ah. Well, this is pretty much your Plague Doctors here. Yeah. Ooh, that is a really nice mask. Yep. I suppose it also works if you're looking to do a, a Plague Knight uh, mm -hmm. uh, costume in, uh, in game, uh, if you remember that from Shovel Knight. And then you've got some diva posters, and once again, the, uh, the little Miku mag here. Cute. So adorable. Look at the little fan there. Yep. And of course, we got our typical uh, consumables here. Uh, as you mentioned, Dance Nine is the new emote. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for bonus awards, uh, actually, it looks it like they look took like out. Yeah, it looks like they took that out finally this time. Mm -hmm. So this AC scratch is going to be around until June sixteenth. It looks like. I, I don't know, maybe I'll do it just so I do it 30 times just so I can get that Miku hair. Because you know how expensive that Miku hair is going to get. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially like a year or two down the road. It's mm -hmm. going to be crazy. Alright. Yeah, um, uh, Sega does do AC Scratch revivals every now and then. But it usually yep. is after like a year they start doing revivals of previous stuff. Yep. Yeah, that helps to replenish the slop, uh, uh, the supply on some of the stuff. Yep. All right. So aside from that, uh, we do also have yet another SG uh, shop sale. Uh, we spoke about this last week, so we're not going to get on our on our soapbox this week. Uh, what I will say, at least, is that they did at least make things a little bit better this week. Um. In this particular case, this is based on Tylor from Fantasy Star Universe, and there are two sets you can get from this, a uh, Tyler Replica male set and a Tyler Replica female set. Um, the male one sells at 550 uh, star gems, and the female one is at 380 star gems. The nice thing about this one is that if you buy both of them, you do get... Um, enough that you can uh, get a uh, you can get the scar, sunglasses, and pendant across your account, but that doesn't fix it for everything. You, the base wear and the um, and the two faces are still going to be locked to a single character. So they're making progress, it, and you can't buy it twice. It says one per account. Yeah, so they're making progress, but still, it's it's it, it they got to fix this situation already. Plus. Uh, yeah, as as we mentioned before, it, it's really, really not good that they're trying to say that there's a discounted s price when when you can't even get things at the original price anyway. Also, they should have just been the PSU scratch like they did in JP. Yep. Uh, let's see. So, up next, uh, we have one more thing from the North American uh, site, and that was um, yesterday we actually had the uh, the Premium Set User Appreciation Day. So Premium users uh, there got uh, 22 Star Gems um, times 2, so 44 in total. Plus throughout the day, anybody that was uh, Premium uh, got access to an extra 100% fun, 100% experience earned, an extra login stamp. 100% rail drop rate and 100% fever occurrence rate uh, for harvesting. And still no rappy suit for me. Yeah, it's 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 that kind of a drop, and it's mm -hmm. it. Eventually, the the supply of those should get far enough down that it won't be that expensive to get it from the store. But for the moment, it still kind of is. Hey, uh, at, from... at least during that time, I was able to get a psyche unit, so. Yep, I saw that. That was uh, that was a nice mm -hmm. find for you. So hey, at least one benefit from all that. <laughs> yep. All right, so that pretty much uh, takes us to the end of the North American site updates here. But we do have several other things that we need to talk about here today. Mm -hmm. Specifically, uh, the we just uh, had the most recent uh, PSO2 Station Plus occur, which is a live show. That's done by the member, uh, by the by the uh, by the uh, the team uh, over in Sega Japan. 
And so, uh, we're over on the uh, bump.org website now here, where they do a lot of the translations for this here. Um, secret phrase um, for this broadcast uh, gives you a rapid bib as well as a Pusani comic memory. Uh, and then there was a, an emergency quest uh, booster poll. Um, emergency quests are what urgent quests are called over in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did have a rare drop boost rate as well as experience uh, boost there. So uh, nice to see that one for the uh, wild Easter quest. Uh, this right here, this is where you get the, uh, yep. And so it's actually not a, it's Uh-oh, actually, the Sonic suit is no longer not an exclusive. <laughs> yep. And it actually wasn't a scratch. It's, it's, you have to spend a certain amount of AC to get these. Oh, hmm. Yeah. So 2000, uh, uh, AC will get you Sonic hair number one and two. Uh, 5,000 AC will get you uh, Sonic Suit M and F, male and female, and then 10,000 will get you the Sonic and Tails lobby action, plus an extra tri-boost plus 150%, which will stack on top of the the NA. Because with all that stuff, it was only $60 on NA, plus a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, this is closer to like $100 or so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, we got so much more with uh, buying the Sonic Pack thing. So. Yeah, the, the free AC well, scratch Rich tickets. Well, on that part. <laughs> yeah, to- totally One agree. Point for Gryffindor. Uh, wait, that's not how it works. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, <laughs> so let's kind of get into the uh, into the um, into the upcoming updates. So why don't you uh, why don't you kind of read through these as I scroll down here. Oh, the Sonic Lobby! Yes! Yep. So they're going to be having the Sonic Lobby in an early June update, which I hope also applies to um, NA. That would also be really great. Yep. Will and remain? Uh, yes, till server lag. <laughs> and... Oh, yep, server lag, because so many people will be played. Yep, and everybody, I know what you're thinking. What is that in the lower right corner? That is oh, Sonic the cur- Now! The cursed abomination of Sonic Now. Oh yeah. God! Yeah, he 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 drops a camel that's uh, basically like um, like uh, Sonic shoes essentially, mm-hmm. which would be great for Bouncer. Yep. Uh, and uh, one of the things is the lobby. Uh, also, if you collect all the rings, that's going to put a a a, a Chaos Emerald in Sonic's hand in the uh, middle yep. of the lobby there. So I, I hope that comes to NA as well, because I love the Sonic Lobby. Yep. Plus, they, they always turn on uh, Station Square music at that point. Yep. 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 Oh, bring back memories back when I first got my GameCube and got Sonic Adventure DX. Oh. Yeah, I played it back on the Dreamcast when, the, when that was out. Oh, yeah. This is happening. Yep. All right, and uh, proceeding on here, uh, we do have uh, uh, in early June. Um, so every year, uh, Sega will do this event whereby uh, they have uh, fans submit uh, different ideas for costumes, weapons, and things like that. Uh, and that's basically what this is here. So uh, these are the um, winners of the uh, item design contest number seven. Uh, so you got uh, various hats here. Uh, as well as of outfits. Got one that's really lewd. Of course. Of course. Japanese people are horny. Yep. I, I would say this one's uh, this one's going to show that even even more so here. They're horny. <laughs> yep. In the middle there. <laughs> yeah. Um, got a giant log for a uh, for a sword camo. It looks like. That's uh, hilarious. So, I love it. Ba- <laughs> so basically, a ballista bat. Um, you've got a blue screen there, which actually we've had green screens in the in the Japanese version for some times, and it's actually the green screen is actually a bit bigger, so I'm kind of surprised that we're getting something that small there. Um, uh, casts are also getting the ability to have like a little glint in their eyes there. Uh, reminds me of a of a certain uh, of a you know you put on the corpse hood outfit. 
Uh, and then you get that glint in your eye, and it, it, it's pretty much going to be Megalovania from there. Oh, God. Yeah. Does that remind me of that? Oh. Didn't that what, what, game come out in 2015 or something? Yeah. What, what, what can you say? The, the thing is basically turned into, into its own genre of music at this point. Yep. The Toby music. Yep. Uh, moving on from here. Um, item design contest winner. Uh, there's a Knuckles lobby action as well as terminal operation number three. Not, not Knuckles like in, in Sonic Knuckles, like Fist. Yep. Knuckles was in Fist. You can see yes. it in the top right there. Yeah, right here. And then the terminal operation has you laying down on the ground. <laughs> and those are oh, a wow. lot of missile pods there. Yeah. Oh my. Uh, Huh. Yep. Overkill much? <laughs> Possibly. Oh, and hey, the new summon pet. Yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and read through this here. Tell everybody about it. So you get the, so there's the new bullet bow PA, which uh, the, P, the like the new PAs that are out they're like um, compound PA so. They're just this one big giant's attack that is on a big cooldown. So you just do it to deal massive damage. That's basically it. And this new pet is called Glass. Its style has double meaning as it's glassy looks and the glasses it wears. Okay. Fast charging glass burst is useful against bosses. So is it like a glass cannon? Huh? I suppose huh? you could say that. It, it's, um, yeah, so, so, the, so the joke is sort of like... Uh, um, some people will refer to people that wear glasses as glasses, but it, it, they're also sort of grassy in that color there, so it's sort of like glasses, or Grass. however Grass. you want to say it. Grass! Oh my... Japan, you do it again with the stupid puns! Yep. Uh. And, and so this is going to be the evolution of the Red Ren pet. Uh, kind of surprised by that one. Uh, that, they, that they chose for that, but that's mm -hmm. that's what it's going to be. Interesting. It looks cute. Yep. I like and the then... little book ass. <laughs> yep. Uh, and successor and then... class adjustments. Oh, boy. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hero twin machine gun adjustments? Yep. Go ahead and read through that. Oh, and TMG on hero is actually my favorite to use. Okay. So, relax, distance, decay, and improved power for a brand new star. Final Storm, buff power, adjust power distribution. All right. Uh, second of Edge is buff power. So they're just buffing the power for the most part. Yep. Uh, moment of Trick, Relax, Distance, Decay, Added Movement and Invasion when activated, and buff power. Hero Time Finish, Expanded Attack Area. Oh, that's good. Just make that AoE even bigger. Uh, TMG, Step Attack, buff power. Hero, hero Counter, buff power. Um, and Consumption Save. Ooh bringing it from 80% to 60%. That's going to be very significant. Oh, Less yeah, time definitely. you have to spend reloading. Exactly. Just, uh, the way that Hero TMG works is uh, whenever you attack, you consume all your PP very, like pretty quickly. It drains. And then whenever you have your TMGs out, your PP does not recover normally. You have to use the step action to reload. And if you do the same thing with other weapons, where you do the timed attack, you do it timed after you stop shooting with the reload, and you'll quickly get a good amount of PP back while charging back up as well. Yep, that's so that's with, one of the. Go ahead. So yeah, with consumption uh, being reduced, that's less time that you have to spend reloading in order to get full PP back up, so you can keep shooting. Yep, hero is uh, definitely one of the uh, one of the unique. Uh... Uh, classes that we'll be getting uh, around the time Episode 5 launches uh, in North America. I'm excited for that, because, like I said, Hero with TMG is my favorite. I, I love playing as that. Yep. And, and uh, we got some Phantom Katana adjustments. Um, doesn't say anything. For, uh, I guess all of those were under the same thing. Quick cut activation, timing relaxed. All right. Yep. And then at 12, yeah, you it doesn't, have, it doesn't have any of the successor classes, which I believe they're going to be called Scion classes, if I remember correctly. Correct. That was found in the manual at one point. Well, we don't have any episode four, five, or six stuff yet, so 
Yep. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to have the hero classes, especially or the successor classes, especially since the cap is still currently at 75. Yep, we're still waiting for Magatsu to release, which is what yeah. we're expecting the next urgent quest is going to be. Yep. That'll be interesting, especially if they still keep it as being Cube Gatsu. I hope it's still Cube Gatsu. <laughs> we gotta see about that, because we don't have 11 star weapon drops like you do in the on the Japanese version. Uh, because yes, we still have some 11 star weapons, like I said, through the Photon Booster Shop. So yeah, it's it, it's more a case that booster. it's more a case that the old type weapons don't even exist on the North American server. Well, like I said, they have a lot of old type weapons converted into new type weapons on NA. So, like the yep. Elder Rifle, for instance. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's sort of like yeah, we the, only have we have balancing on episode six, I believe. Yep, and it's it's unique balancing uh, compared to the Japanese mm -hmm. server as well. Yeah, because our cap is seventy five, seventy five. Yep. Uh, so it's all dual blade adjustments. Uh, gear accumulation amount is going to be uh, 1.2 times now. Uh, not sure. If th uh, they don't say if that's uh, if that's uh, main class only here, but I don't think it is. And if that's the case, uh, that'll be nice if you're using a twirl as a subclass. I um, think it's just main class, especially since they're talking about a twirl specific PAs here, like light weight, dark flow, and radiance thing. Yeah, they are talking about gear accumulation, actually, yeah. uh, for dual blade. Okay, um, so normal attack, uh, photon point uh, recovery amount is going to be 1.5 times, and they've added mobility to the attack. Oh, Radiant Sting, uh, they've reduced photon point consumption and improved mobility when not locked on. Particle flow, reduced photon point consumption and reduced power. So that's actually a debuff there. Uh, oh, power geez. distribution adjusted and hit stop relaxed. So uh, that's whenever you actually hit a target, you'll uh, basically get stuck in place for a brief moment as that hit happens, and then uh, your animation will then uh, proceed. So they've so relaxed that. Lock. Yep. Uh, light wave, they've improved mobility, extended distance, expanded the attack range, and edge receives no changes. And then parry, uh, they've extended invincibility upon activation. All right. Yeah, because Etoile is a very heavily defensive class. Well, yep. whenever I played it. All right, and, and we have updates. Yep. So we got some uh, pretty big updates here. Um, increased zoom on preview windows. Uh, they've added a setting to the launcher if you want the gamepad to work when the window is not active. I know how much you're interested in that one. Mm-hmm, because I do a lot of things, like, on two monitors. But even then, whenever a PC is out, I'm primarily playing keyboard and mouse. I do not like playing on controller with this game. Yep, same here. That's my plan as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Other games, yeah, that's fine. But this game, no. Yeah, too many buttons to manage. Yeah. And too many times I have to quickly move the camera around. <laughs> yep. Maybe if there was such a thing as an R uh, R4 and left 4, maybe that might work. Mm-hmm. Uh, the story difficulty selection to say casual or hardcore. Yep, so that's what we have here on the North American server. So mm -hmm. that kind of leads into the question of, are they actually preparing the Japanese servers to potentially do a merger? It it's... It still seems unlikely given the different balancing that's going on. Yeah. Uh, plus, like they're pretty. They, they want to get up to parity with JP by the end of 2020, so that could cause a merger then at that point. Yep. So, as as is typical, we have no idea what Sega's doing. Yeah. Uh, team point week cap has increased from 4,500 to 50,000 per week. That's significant. Yep, it basically lets a player now have their own team without having to, um, without having to uh, get locked out every week at forty-five hundred points. Yeah, but forty-five hundred points to fifty thousand—that is extremely significant. Yep, that's like you want to max it out. Get ready to play five thousand rounds of uh, Black Niac. Oh hell yeah! I'm going up against that cheating bastard. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that when when you were trying to just get your three clears on that. That was insane. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, the first one done? All right, uh, let me get in here. Oh, he got a blackjack? Okay, cool. And then it went right. for like five rounds without you winning once. Yeah. Word of note, if you're going to play blackjack, play with other people because then that cheats out the uh, dealer. Yep. Plus you also start to get into the uh, into the bonus rounds then as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, you're going to get episode Lisa's partner card. Um, they've also added the 13-star upgrades to the Astir units. And they've added potentials to Astir NT and the Atlas X series. Those are 15-star weapons. Yeah. And they've added special ability factors to 13-star units. Oh! Now that's significant. Oh, that's significant. Because so, the special ability factors were only on uh, weapons for a while. Yep. So now, not only do 13-star units have uh, S6, S7, and S8 abilities, they also have access to special ability factors. Those are the things whereby once you've got things grounded up uh, completely, uh, you can then choose an augment to put onto uh, something uh, that mm -hmm. is, that's just built into the unit or weapon. By the way, Vampiric Strike is pretty much required for a lot of classes. Yep. The only exception is it's well. Yeah, but, like, if you're playing as a gunner, you want Vampiric Strike. Yep. All right. And go ahead and uh, uh, read this one off, if you could. All right. So we got some more early June updates. Added Tokyo Rainbow bonus quest. So the bonus quests, which currently aren't in NA yet, they're basically quests that you get with, um, that you can do if you get a key for them and they give a massive amount of experience points. And apparently this is going to be a lot better than the Tokyo Silver or Gold. So you can acquire Ability, Transplate Pass, and Sage Crest. So yes, that is extremely better compared to just the normal Silvers or Golds. So Yeah. Yeah, the last new uh, bonus quest that we got, I think, was like in late Episode 4, early Episode 5, with mm -hmm. the... Um, it was either the Rappy one or the uh, Tagami one. Um, the uh, the Lightning Wolves, as I sometimes refer to them as. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, I want to point out something to our North American viewers here. Uh, since you haven't had a chance to see them yet, these over here, these are Emperor Rappies, but they are themed around the different holidays of the year. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. This one over here, I've always kind of like been... Are they doing blackface with that guy? Eh. I don't know. They're, they're rappies. They're birds. So it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah. And then we've still got some other early June updates. Um, they're going to have... Ome Omega Falls piece of arcs trash. Yeah, you guys don't know what Omega is yet, but it's, uh, it's going to be... Interesting when you run into that because it's mm -hmm. um, his attack basically, patterns um, change. Basically, Omega Falls Luther is loser um, in NA, but it's the same fight, just slightly different. Yep. Um, the, uh, the triggers that already exist will also receive the Ultra Hard update, uh, and Atlas Unit series will drop with that. So we have the Atlas, uh, the Atlas X weapons. Yes, that is true. Anyway, continue on, right, sir? Um, so yeah, uh, we've got the Atlas weapons, and now this is going to give us Atlas units as well, so we'll see if there's a set with those or not. They, they, there typically isn't. Mm -hmm. And we got Pusoni comic! Oh, joy! Yep, do you want to take this one? Uh, the Pusoni stuff. Um, so Pusoni comic, by the way, is an online comic about these characters playing Fantasy Star and being adorable. Th that's basically all it is. It's cute girls doing cute things along with a few guys. Uh, is any episode three as busted as JP episode three at launch? Uh, no, it was not. Yeah, it, it's it's it's, it's better. It, it's a lot better. So. So yeah, with uh, Pusani stuff, so you'll have some of the characters from the comics appear in the lobby. You can get their partner cards to play with them. 
Um, other characters are going to be in the Frankus Cafe, and you can also get their partner cards. And various of those characters will appear in emergency trials. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, the Puzzle Knee comic is... Uh, it's okay. I, I, I like the little animation things that they did a while back. Those were cute. Yep. So you're going to be able to pick up uh, seven partner cards here. These three up here and these four down here. And the four down there are, especially the bottom left two, are the two main characters in the comic. Yep. This season, Zekt has kind of been a main character as well, to a degree. Yeah, him as well, yep. Oops. Uh, and then, uh, aside from that, there's also a series of campaigns from June 10th. Uh, there's a login campaign that gives you boost items, one million experience tickets, and ability, uh, ability transplant passes. Uh, there's an there item camp. Tokyo Rainbow. Yep. Uh, there's an emergency quest rush for 100% experience and rare drop to certain emergency quests. There's a level up boost event uh, for the level up quest. Uh, that's uh, going to be the what? That's yeah. interesting for real life presence, huh? Yeah, I'm. They didn't say anything really about this, so I'm. I'm kind of curious what they're going to be doing with that and then he uh, if, um, if Gaijins are able to do that as well we'll see I mean typically I, I think it, you, but... I think typically you at least need a Japanese address to be able to yeah. do anything um, but then we also have the main meat and potatoes of this year episode 6 chapter 5 yes more story stuff yay Yep, so the Photoners have reached Omega. No idea how they even got in there, because the way you got in there originally was to basically time freeze a black hole. <laughs> the the, the uh, story's insane, by the way. <laughs> um, but you do have, um, you do have uh, characters reacquainting themselves. Margarita is the, uh, is the leader of one of the, uh, one of the areas on Omega. Um, so you're going to get main missions and limited missions with that. Um, something I did want to point out here as well. Um, there is a... I, yeah, it's this one right here. If you look carefully, you're going to see uh, Lisa and Harriet separated there. Which is interesting considering their current condition. Which I'm not going to go into any further about. Yeah, because spoilers. Yep. Uh, let's see. And, uh, then you do have some, uh, ARCS missions associated with this as well. Uh, you're also gonna have, uh, another side story featuring Stratos, Kokia, and the Colt here as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, uh, the three main characters of the, um, I guess what we're calling the, the Scion story, as it were. Um, because last time we learned quite a bit about their history and how, uh, Kokia thought that Luko at one point tried to kill them. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Yep. And then, uh, once again, we, uh, and then... Got some more uh, updates. Yep. Uh, this is where we get into part, uh, part two here. So this is the late June update. So okay. this is the... Winner's Design 7, Side B. Yep. So these and... are more outfits designed by players that are going to be in AC scratches. Yep, and I did want to point out here uh, this here. Uh, this one in particular. It's basically oh. a polygon character. That's the, It looks... Yeah, that's fighting... That's the fighting polygon team. Yep. Oh boy, Smash 64 represent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got um, some more. Uh... Oh my God! Spinny teacups. Yes. yes, I was like when I first saw that. Is this Disney World? <laughs> yes, it is. We're getting the spinning teacups. <laughs> now all we need is just is it blasting. It's a small world after all. It's a small <laughs> world after. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then of course uh, other. Uh, 
other act uh, emotions and things like that that are built by uh, uh, by other players. Uh, let's see, we've got this uh, one where you uh, pull up a uh, pose, which gun slash is pretty much useless until that next uh, 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 successor class comes out. Yeah, and we have no idea if that's going to be a secret fourth friend of that group now. Mm. It's, I, I still find it funny that they're actually making Gunflash useful, useful since it's been pretty useless since the game launched. <laughs> yep. I mean, if you look at some of the photon arts they were using in the original trailer, it kind of looks like how uh, how the Sheik was attacking during his one, uh, one fight. Hmm. Um... But it's also, it's also, in a way, sort of a combination of all three of the Scion classes as well, um, mm -hmm. in other respects. Um, let's see. Uh, we also have a late June update in The Driving Rain comes to Corrupted Nevarius, uh, which means this is going to be uh, the first revision we've had of uh, in The Driving Range, uh, or, or Driving Rain, rather, uh, mm -hmm. whereby there are going to be Lumen Mechs appearing. Oh, interesting. By the way... Lumin Lumin Max are episode six enemies. Yep. Uh, Just for the uh, NA people watching here. Yep. Uh, you can acquire uh, special uh, ability capsules, antithesis cultivation, and rising pursuits. Those are basically items that you can use as you're adding augments onto a weapon, uh, mm -hmm. in order to get get another augment on. Uh, and then. Uh, equipment with soul catalysts will drop. Now, catalysts uh, for souls, uh, if I remember correctly, those are kind of hard to put together. Hmm. Uh, let's see, you've also got a new mag here. Kind of looks like a... Uh, and I, say, tell me if, if I'm wrong about this. Execute? Execute? Uh, it, I, I get a more, like, they look like little frogs and in grapes or something? I don't know. Maybe. It, it looks weird. Yeah. If they were gonna go for, for frogs, why not bring back the Kakuwane? And it is a mission reward, so you do uh, limited arcs missions and you get it as a reward. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting that, that they're not doing Driving Rain 2020 as an urgent quest. Or no, I'm I'm misreading that. I'm sorry. Uh, so it is an urgent quest, but uh, there are but there are arcs missions that you can only complete like once to get these. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's also a Quill Vesper bow that will drop, uh, and then also a, a glass egg, apparently. Yeah, glass. That's right. Yeah, the uh, for the for the new pet. Thank you. Okay, um, and then, uh, there's a Pusuni comic event happening, uh, so, That's Midsummer. SG Scratch, alright. Yep. By the way, um, the, those, this SG Scratch gives you, um, ability success path things. Basically yep. things that will help you with getting abilities onto weapons and units. Yeah, this is like only the second or third time that they've ever done something like this, where they've actually... Mm -hmm. put things like this in and e even if you do uh even if you do uh, go for things in this it you're still going to have the doo-doo and monica factor and all this here so it's never it's never a guarantee <laughs> Nani okane. Uh, let's see and then there's also a grind campaign if i remember correctly this was the campaign that got pushed back mm -hmm. um so it's a 5% item grind success and 5% special ability success. And then uh, new type weapons uh, get extra 15% experience when grinded. And new types also get a great success of plus 25%. Best time to grind up 12 stars to get grinding fodder. Yep, especially if you do that right after an urgent quest that gives you a, uh, a grind boost as well. That'll give you <laughs> drop, a, drop a plus 50% on that. That's almost 100% there get a bunch of 12 stars boost or grinded up to plus 30 to either use or sell yep 
Uh, and then, okay, so, yeah, so there is a real-life merchandise contest, apparently, that's going to be happening here. Okay. Um, uh, there's also an art contest with uh, episode 6 as the theme, uh, an interlocking web panel event uh, to acquire 8th anniversary badges, um, character contest with summer and romantic classic style outfits, there's an 8th anniversary raffle, so that's probably what the live present thing is. Ah. So uh, you, and uh, post stuff on Twitter, uh, screenshots there, and then they do a raffle to choose who the winner is. Yep. And then, uh, as it comes with uh, most of these um, uh, interconnected uh, uh, web events here, uh, there's going to be both an individual point and a ship point ranking. Hmm. Uh, and usually that trades off uh, week to week, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then uh, we've got some other campaigns here. Uh, free Field Super Boost uh, from May 27th to June 10th. So 300% experience, 250% rare drop rate, 100% fever for all fields. Um, That's the explorations in NA. Yep. Uh, you can also get sage crests, which are items that give that... sage crests. <laughs> yeah, that oh is a lot God. of sage crests. Yeah, because uh, that will give you enough to get some uh, really good weapons there, especially with that create a five, 15 star weapon campaign. Use yep. those sage crests to get the weapons to make that 15 star then. Yep, oh, and boy. they are giving you rear grain arabo stones, which means light stream weapons. Yes. Especially since uh, Persona has not uh, been done often from what I've seen. Yep. Uh, and then there is apparently a campaign to clear highly difficult quests, so I would expect that's probably going to be clearing um, uh, uh, Omega Masquerade, potentially clearing Fall Egg, uh, as well as the quest for the expert requirement. And, and then, yep. You said that Arc League hasn't happened in JP for a while. It hasn't. At least when I look back at the at uh, on the on the server, it says the last one happened in 2016. Huh. Weird, because I remember them happening when I was playing on JP. Hmm. And maybe, maybe then maybe, maybe there was, was just the a last glitch and it was participated in. Again? Maybe that was the last one that you participated in. I think. No, I don't. I don't think so because it's in the same section that that they put the the time attack stuff under, and that rotates every week. Huh. I don't remember so. But hey, uh, they're doing Arcs League again. Good. Yep. All right. So aside from that, we've also got other things we need to talk about here. Um. So. Idola Fantasy Star Saga. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, that is a mobile game that was launched uh, a little bit over a year and a half ago. And they are just starting into episode two now. That released earlier this week. Uh, and so I put together a little bit of a package of kind of what the what what that looks like uh, at the start here. Talk about that. I'll be right back then. Yep. Alrighty. So um, this is, uh, basically, uh, your, uh, your mag, uh, compatriot. You're, you're basically in cold sleep right now. Um, uh, and, uh, they're just waking you up. Uh, they're kind of reacquainting you to the world. Uh, you're in a ship, and once you, uh, once you do that, you go through with character creation. You got two characters you can choose from here. Um, uh, and once you do that, then you go into... Um, your first battle lets you uh, check out what abilities you've got, uh, including uh, what your elemental blast is as well. Uh, so let's take a look at this one here. Yep. And then once you clear the quest, you then get a choice of one of three characters you can add on to your team immediately. I went with Stella, since she is a character I've had trouble with. Uh, getting from the uh, from the gotchas in the past here, um, they join your team as well as other characters from that gotcha that you happen to pick up. 
And then, following this, you then crash down on Vanduul, which is the planet that uh, Idola Fantasy Star Saga takes place on, and it's here uh, that you then meet the main character of Episode 2. Uh, and, yeah, so that pretty much, uh, that pretty much, uh, uh, takes us, uh, in, uh, into, into the main story from there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, her name, I'm trying to pull it up again here. Uh, that was, uh, Giselle. Uh, Giselle, uh, was her name. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice that, uh, we finally do have... Uh, episode 2, we, um, the end of Episode 1 happened earlier this year. I want to say it was back in January or February. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is... Uh, the reason I bring it up is because by playing this game, you're able to get Star Gems uh, on the Japanese version uh, through your actions in this game. About 100 a week, if I remember correctly. Uh, say one more time, sorry? It's about 100 per week, if I remember correctly. Uh, I believe that's correct, yes. Uh, and let's see, so, um, yeah, so you get a new protagonist, uh, you're able to choose their name, elements, and appearance. Um, both new and old players start with episode two, and by completing, uh, chapter one of episode two, you can then go back to finish up episode one if you haven't done that. And then you have Giselle here, along with what her Law and Chaos uh, fake divergence are. Uh, she mainly focuses on kicking maneuvers uh, under her Striker class, aka Bouncer. Uh, and then Stella is back from Episode 1. She has an updated Idola called the Arch Ares. And then here are the... Uh, the main antagonists of the uh, of episode two. So you got Rockingham, the Prince of Kansi, and the commander of the nation's army, holder of the Zodiac Cancer, uh, Lindsay, uh, the lieutenant commander of the Kansi army, has a fervent hatred towards Gazelle and seeks to end her life, uh, holder of the Capricorn Zodiac. Uh, Farley, the first lieutenant of the Kansi army, who serves as Lindsay's adjutant, uh, wields a launcher under the new soldier class. Uh, and uh, this character here uh, serves as a bodyguard at the aid of Rockingham. And then uh, we've got some new markers in uh, in the battle scenes, and what these represent are uh, different uh, different uh, types that these characters are uh, useful for. So, um, you've got characters that are attack, defense, speed, weak damage, special effect resistance, and critical um, effective, essentially. Um, for example, Giselle is a defense type. When she switches to being a law character, she'll be a critical type with increased critical rate. And if she switches to chaos, um, she'll be a, uh, a weak damage up type, which boosts the weak power. And a big update for this as well, all the battle sprites are now in 3D using smoother animations. So in the in the past they were just using uh, typical sprite artwork. And then, uh, you've also got a special mission going on right now called Descent of a God. Uh, these are uh, descent quests and right now it features uh, Dark Falls Theatra Delusion and Dark Falls Theatra Remnant and that was the final boss of episode one. So yeah, a lot has uh, has happened uh, in Idola, and so it's only a matter of time until uh, we learn even more uh, from that here. Um, on the PSO2S side, uh, they're uh, also acquiring several new ships, uh, including characters from the Pusuni anime, which broadcast uh, on the Fantasy Star channel on YouTube. Uh, they've also gotten access to a Maria chip uh, from the PSO2 main story, uh, but it's also labeled as a TCG card, or, or chip rather, which means that, that is from the, the trading card game version. Uh, and then moving on, uh, we also have some merch to talk about here. So, uh, okay. 
up first, uh, we've got um, some posters that will be given out uh, depending upon where you purchase uh, Fantasy Star Online uh, Episode 6 from. So Amazon.co.jp. Uh, there's a Wonder Goo, and I'm not sure what this store is called. Um, By but, the way, uh, getting, the, getting the physical version of these games is just gives you like bonus items to spend or to, to put into the game then. Yep, there's a yeah, there's an there's an item code that you get for that. Yeah. And by the uh, way, uh, through Amazon.co or through the Japanese Amazon, you can do foreign shipping, so that that is a good thing. Nice. All right, and then uh, you've also got um, these here, and the one that kind of caught my eye was the one on the right side here. You get a class mug apparently. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, so Hunter, Ranger, Force, and all the rest of them here. Um, even the, um, even the, on the, on the side here, you've got, you've got, you basically got all 12 of them here. Which is interesting because that means whatever the new one is going to be is missing from this mug. <laughs> Uh, moving down to the um, to the uh, episode Oracle releases, uh, Blu-ray and DVD. So, uh, episode uh, so the set uh, number seven, eight, and nine have been pushed back. Um, number uh, uh, set number seven has been pushed back from May twentieth to August nineteenth. Set number eight has been pushed from June seventeenth to September sixteenth, and the ninth set has been pushed from. Uh, July 15th to October 21st. Three months delay for all of them. Oof. Yep. And then uh, when it comes to uh, uh, Volume 7 here, uh, it's going to release, uh, as we said, uh, August 19th. First limited edition is going to be 7,500 yen for the Blu ray, 6,500 yen for the DVD. Normal edition will be uh, 5,500 yen for the Blu ray, 4,500 yen for the DVD. That is still really expensive for three episodes, yeah. if I'm being honest there. That's, that's $55, $55 for three episodes? Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that, that's... Why? I mean, I, I get that you're going to get in-item codes, but are they really worth that much? I don't know. Let's, let's take a look. We've got... Uh, let's see here. Once it wants to load. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here we go. Uh, so you get a Luther outfit as well as a uh, Matoy outfit. Uh, and you also get uh, these poses which let you float above the ground, if I remember correctly. And you got uh, room stickers. Yep. And also seven of the Episode Zero memories. Hmm. Episode Zero was a, was a manga that came out. Um, and kind of told the 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 story of uh Mel Fonsina and uh Getnam Hart uh before um uh, before everything went down in the game. And then one last bit of merch here. There is an AIS Vega plastic model. Uh the That's date cool. is yet to be announced, but it is at a 172nd size. They need to release a AIS Gundam yeah, I do it. There go. That plus, I, I would love to see AIS in uh, one of the um, in one of the Super Robot Wars at some point. I mean, they got Virtual On in there, so why not um, why not uh, the AIS from uh, PSO two? Hmm. But seriously, if they do release AIS as a Gundam, I will, I will probably consider buying it and putting it together because I've I've never put it together a Gundam before. They look pretty cool. Yep. They're expensive as hell, but they look pretty cool. Actually, this one may already be constructed, potentially. We'll, we'll have yeah, to see. If not, it's going to be like plastic pieces that you need to break off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 172... One, one by... Or, yeah, 172nd of scale. So, it's... It's interesting. I like it. Yep. But, uh, but uh, anyway, that's all the merchandise there. Yep. Now let's talk about some other very interesting news in terms of classic PSO. 
Yes, indeed. This is really big news. I'm just going to bring up the article here, but we're just going to kind of have this on the screen. We're not going to be reading through this because we're just kind of giving our opinions on everything here. This is really big news, what's happened mm -hmm. here. The fact that the original Xbox Live is coming back. Not by Microsoft, of course. This is going to be a fan project that's running this. But basically, mm -hmm. the goal is to get pretty much all the Xbox Live games running again. And I remember way back in the day when things were originally shutting down, there was a group of players that just kept playing Halo 2 over and over and over in the same lobby, and they kept that going for like a month after Xbox Live shut down. Yep, I, I know, I remember hearing about that. <laughs> but Until yeah. eventually they were all, they all got disconnected. Yep. But it was nice that Microsoft at least let the servers run that long for them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so essentially uh, OG Xboxes are going to be able to reconnect to the Xbox Live service uh, through this new host. And that brings with it the potential that Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 on the Xbox could be coming back. Yes, because here's the thing when it comes to the Xbox version, for those of you who don't know. So episode one and two has was released on both the Xbox and the GameCube. The GameCube version is the one that most people play because that's the one that includes split screen and also already has online support. That's why getting a copy of episode one and two or episode one and two plus is really damn expensive. The Xbox version, however, could only could also do offline and online. But here's the thing: without Xbox Live, there was no way that you could play the offline version. You needed to go online. You needed to connect on to Xbox Live first before you could either even play the offline version of the game. So because of that, the Xbox version of Episode 1 and 2 is pretty cheap to get. It's only like $20. And that's because once you have it, it's just there for collection's sake. You can't play it because you needed the connection to Xbox Live. Now with this coming back, especially since it's going to make it to where you don't have to mod your Xbox. You just connect onto um, the server through DNS, I believe, yep. which is what um, things like Weemify do. So with doing this, that will possibly bring back the idea of having Xbox PSO back online again. Yep. And not, not just only that, but I remember back in the day, there was a guy by, um, I knew online by the name of Snow Fox, and he was able to get blue burst content loaded into the xbox version and that's cool that is really damn cool yeah so blue burst stuff is blue burst was purely a pc thing so that is episode four content what about episode three episode three it's a card game no one cares about the card game <laughs> hey i at least enjoyed it but i get what you were saying earlier yep it's slow it's boring I know it has more stuff to deal with story stuff and especially with Idola, but I don't care. It's a slow card game. I don't like that in my PSO. Yep. I would say, if anything, think of it as actually a more advanced version of Hearthstone, if you can imagine that, because back in the day, this game had HP bars for each of the cards, but it also gave you a field of movement around a field as mm -hmm. well. Still extremely slow paced though. Music was good though. I, I like the Idola theme in episode three. It's pretty good. Yep. Idola the Strange Fruits. Yep. Which everybody in the North American PSO2 servers will be hearing that very, very soon. If not with this patch uh, coming up for a PC version, then most likely within the next month. It's just, couldn't that music have been in a different game <laughs> like I added it into episode 4 or something I don't know I don't know I mean episode 4 unfortunately, for episode 4 we really didn't even have that many bosses to be honest we just there had the Chambertain worm yeah there was just one boss just three different forms of it that's yep. it Yeah, episode four's content wasn't that great, but hey, some of the missions are fun to do. I, I really enjoy doing Crater. Yep. Uh, inner or outer? Inner. Gotcha. I, I really like the in in inner Crater. Yeah, I prefer the outer Crater because that was that the music for that area was essentially a remix 
of all the Fantasy Star 3 generations of Doom music. Mmm. Oh boy, Fantasy Star 3. That's a game I need to play through eventually. It's got four yeah, endings. Um, also, also, another thing when it comes to this Insignia thing. So, someone's already looked through some of the coding that they could do, and they already found ways that they could connect onto their own uh, GC server. So, I, I believe I saw this on the um, PSO subreddit. They were looking in they were looking into the code of the Xbox version and they saw that what they are currently doing for their Dreamcast GameCube server, they could easily get the Xbox one onto it as well. Gotcha. Yeah, that, so that would be is, really interesting. Yeah. So this is exciting news, especially the fact that I've been meaning to get myself an Xbox purely for modding purposes because it's, that, the original Xbox is extremely good for emulation. Uh, but with this no news now coming out, it's convincing me to get that old black box a little bit more. All I'll have to get used to is that the Duke. Either that or you can guess the, uh, the S controller. Yeah, I could do that, but come on. If you're playing on the Xbox, you gotta use the Duke. I suppose so. I used it's to have a Duke. I used to have I, a Duke I, and then... Go ahead. Remember, I, I actually still remember the first time I played on Xbox. It was actually with Halo 2. Gotcha. It was my, at my cousin's house. Halo 2 was... Go ahead. I was able to use that controller just fine, so... Yeah. Halo 2 was an interesting game because you get to the end of it and Chief is like, uh, finish the fight and then credits roll. Yep. It's like, there was, there was like no con, uh, it was like, they got to the climax of the story and then, then you're waiting several years again. Yay, wait until Halo 3. <laughs> yep. I, I still like Halo 2, it's one of my favorites. Oh yeah. I, I would say the introduction of the Arbiter was a great addition to that series. Mm -hmm. And I forgot how good the cutscenes looked. Ugh. Now, in-game, um, not that great, but cutscenes, oh my god, they went all out with the cutscenes. Yep. And then you take a look at what they did uh, with the Master Chief collection, and that was also really amazing. Mm -hmm. I still love the, the thing that he says in the first uh, real mission. Uh, permission to leave the hangar. For what? To give the Covenant back their bomb. Yeah, that was that was a great moment. Can, I can, love that so much. Can we please get a Sangeli costume in PSO2? And also Master Chief. Yeah, that too. I, I, want, I, I want my Master Chief outfit. Just give me it. <laughs> oh uh, my yeah. god, that, that would actually be great of... Uh, not only having like Master Chief and Cortana, but having Covenant outfit. Oh my God, that would be great. Let you me dress set up, up as an elite. <laughs> even better, you could you could set that up in uh, as uh, as a PvP battle. Yes. Have one have one side be the Covenant, the other side be the. Yep. Uh, be the, on the ah, what's the? Oh crap! What's the name of it again? Uh, Sangeli. Sangeli, yeah. One side be the Sangeli and the other side be the Covenant. Perfect. <laughs> yep, I'll be on the Covenant side there. <laughs> and yeah, bat battle mode does exist in PSO too, but it, it's it it was uh, introduced with like late episode four, early episode five content, so it, we're not going to be getting that for a little bit here. Or who knows, we might get it soon with PC coming out. I don't know. I, I just want challenge mode. We'll see. It it's really going to depend upon if they set up the shared ship or not. Yeah. Anyway, we were talking about Xbox Live with PSO. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, that's that's really big news, um, being mm -hmm. able to uh, uh, have, all the, have, have everybody experience the game. And plus, the Xbox version was the only one that gave you voice, uh, voice chat as well. Yeah. Oh boy, that'll be interesting. It, the original Xbox voice chat. 
That brings back memories. Memories of bad microphones and... <laughs> constant swearing and constant uh, saying that I did your mom. No, I did your mom. Yeah. Good time. Maybe it's not a good thing good that this time. is happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh... But yeah, so that's that's gonna be big news. They're uh, they're apparently uh, still in the process of trying to get everything figured out. They don't even have like a beta going at this point uh, for this project. But yeah, I I, I believe a uh, modern vintage gamer is going to be par participating in that beta. Nice. So yeah, they're hoping to with this beta, they're going to get more things ironed out, more things working, and then hopefully get this out soon for people because this is massive. Yep. Plus being able to re-enable a game that players haven't been able to play for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, and by the way, since because of that, make sure you get a copy of PSO on Xbox soon, because it's going to skyrocket in price. Oh, yeah. Just like what happened with the GameCube version once that get, got back online. Yep. Luckily, Dreamcast is not that expensive with getting the games, but setting up online on Dreamcast is a bit of a pain. Like, it requires a modem cable, um, some soldering skills, a Raspberry Pi. There's a lot of steps involving getting Dreamcast back online. Yep. But yeah, this is just going to be easy. You just type in the DNS, just like with Weemify, involving the... Uh, DS. Yeah, it's so. such a great project that this, that this sort of thing is finally happening again. Yeah. I'm excited. Yep. Anyway, uh, that should be it for what we have. Do you have anything else to add in, Redstar? That's pretty much it for me today as well here. Yep, and that's it for me. Yep, so that brings us to the end of this episode. On behalf of Zance and myself, thank you for joining us today. Day has dawned. Have a great day, everyone. Johnny. <laughs>